a global pandemic. The zombie apocalypse. You may think I came here to find the cure, but I came here for one reason, and one reason only. To find my love, Kareem. Out of all the men in Haran, there's none I love more than Kareem, and I was willing to peel back the onion and go through the nine layers of hell in order to save him. Was it selfish? Maybe. Did I have to injure poor innocent children in order to make this rescue mission possible? Plausibly. Was it all worth it to save my homeboy? Oh, you better believe it! So, can you beat dying light with only pipes? Let's find out, baby. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was watching the telly on Christmas morning when all of a sudden, I saw the wreckage of Haran and amongst it all, my man Kareem was there! I didn't know how on earth he had escaped from my basement. He was like a kid. One moment he was there, the next moment he was gone and a white van was driving off into the distance and I was just sitting there like, bruh. I immediately dropped my bowl of cereal and hopped on the nearest plane. But there was only one problem. Because of my osteoporosis, I was only able to use metal pipes to defend myself against the evils of this sad world. I was sitting in the plane listening to the instructions of my bosses about how and where to find the epic Fortnite gamer hacks that would destroy the zombie apocalypse. But all I could think about was how I was going to find Kareem. I jumped out of the airplane, got caught on the building, broke both of my ankles from a 3 foot drop, and came across my first enemies, the boys in yellow. Funnily enough I got hit in the head with a pipe, started getting gang beat, and then Crane decided it was a good idea to off one of the boys with his gun. Luckily this is a cutscene so it doesn't count. The boys started running, but laying there on the cold ground, I swore, someday I'd kill that man with a blunt pipe the same way he tried to kill me. And then literally within 5 seconds of being in the city, Crane got bit. Was that the bite of 87? So I got saved, scared some children like I usually do, and after years of searching, finally found the sexiest man in the universe. Oh heck yeah! Look at that hairy gorilla back. And don't even get me started on his belly full of mead. You're a very lucky woman. Then I watched a child play with a soda can and I couldn't help but notice the woman on the bench just staring at me. Listen woman, I have no bad intentions, okay? I'm only attracted to fat men that look like gorillas. I'm mean, gonna die because of this guy? Quiet. Oh, fuck quiet. Now he's gonna get a Mir Santissim. Listen here, cunt. You have something to say? You can say it to my face. Oh, so now you're avoiding eye contact, huh? What kind of a man are you? Hey, where's room 190? Upstairs. Oh, oh! So now you're too good to look me in the eyes, huh? Yeah, that's what I thought, you piece of shit. After making friends and introducing myself to everyone around the tower, it was now time to meet the big boy. The big man, the head honcho himself. Raheem? We don't tolerate lazy assholes here in the tower. I'm not lazy, you little shit. It was time to save a boy on the 13th floor, and I truly felt like a 5th grader, sprinting everywhere I went. So I made my way to the elevator, but there was a big obstacle. This man standing in front of the elevator looking like my high school bully. Where do you think you're going? Fuck this man, I got my lunch money stolen one too many times to fall for this old trick. I made it to the 13th floor, texted my ex-girl, and heard screams of terror in one of the rooms. Yo! Yo, help me out, dog! I can't breathe back here, dog! So like Arthur pulling the sword from the stone, I pulled the pipe from the wheelchair and booked it down the hall. Now, I'm gonna be real with you guys. When I busted into that room and started swinging, I wasn't entirely sure if what I was hitting was a zombie or not. But that didn't stop me and I just kept going until his goddamn head blew off his body. And even when his head was off his body, I just kept going. You had to kill him, didn't you? Kill him? Yes. Savagely beat his body with a rusty old pipe? Now that's a different story. God damn it! That was... that was my brother. Oh shit! Maybe if we tried CPR? By the way, if you guys are enjoying this video, give me a fat like. Having to bend over for the YouTube algorithm really doesn't feel that great, but a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Raheem was feeling pretty bad that everyone was against him, so I offered to give him a good old shoulder rub, but I guess he didn't feel comfortable with a stranger touching him. But don't blow your load just yet. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'd prefer this channel being family friendly, but because I have to comply with Kappa, Raheem is forced to say things like that. Remember before when I mentioned the nine onion layers of hell? Well, one of these layers was at the crane, no pun intended. I tried jumping prematurely and found that I was trapped in an infinite freefall of hell until I talked to Raheem. I don't know what kind of Doctor Strange ass magic is happening here, but I decided to finally talk to the guy. We both jumped, we played tag, 
and the mad lad was already gone. I searched for him for a bit and half expected him to be hanging from the building like, shit, he caught me. But I guess he was just fast as hell. Anyway, I was wasting too much time in the tower. Kareem was out there all cold and lonely and I had to find him. So my first task was to find pipes and metal parts. These would be the two pieces of the puzzle that would secure my victory. Now, I honestly thought pipes would be extremely difficult to find, but lucky me, in almost every trash bin filled with white garbage, there was always a nailed plank in a pipe. So this is how I found 90% of my pipes throughout the run. Metal parts were easily found in the blue trash bins too. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why is this challenge hard? Well, you see, the pipe is one of the worst weapons in the game. It's literally the first weapon you pick up, of course it's trash. It's not the worst weapon in the game, but it's definitely a loser. And there's three types of pipes. The water pipe, the gas pipe, and the pipe pipe. The way I used them in battle was to attack the enemy until my pipe needed repairing. I'd repair it until it broke, and then I'd break it down to get a metal part, rinse and repeat. And you know what? Let's quickly list the rules. Halfway through a video and only listing the rules now? Only on the Dante Ravioli channel, baby. Rule number one, I can only use pipes to kill enemies. Now listen, a few times I did use the grapple so that I could brutally beat men to death on the ground, but this was strictly for entertainment sake. I could kill human enemies without the grapple perfectly fine. And you guys voted for this so you can't get mad. Suck on that, haters. Rule number two, cutscenes don't count. I feel like I shouldn't even have to say this, but I've gotten the odd comment that's like, oh, he used the gun in the cutscene. Challenge failed, this channel is trash. Rule number three, no using throwables or misalliance objects like firecrackers or the UV flashlight. It's pipes only. Okay, enough of the boring stuff. Kareem needs me. I arrived to Zara's meth lab and he gave me a shot of that good stuff. And right outside, I jealously watched as a man sharpened his machete to perfection. Huh, must be nice. Spike told me to go arm some car traps and it was time to get into mad lad mode. The first step of this mission was to murder a man inside of my safe house and before Jade could even finish her sentence, the deed was done. Oh, for Christ's sakes, I have to sleep there tonight. Here was the real big oof of the challenge. Could I, a single man, activate both of the car traps with a horde of zombies surrounding them? Of course I could. And that's what I did. I ran up to the first car and activated it, no problem. The second one was more of a hassle, but I was eventually able to get it done. And here, I came to Big Boy. He wasn't too bad, I just fought him like I normally do. And then I found Shrek spying on me, went to bed, and woke up the next morning with many regrets and memories of the day before. But today was a new day. It was time to meet Brecken and not to be rude, but my first impressions of the guy weren't very good. Crane will go. He'll be happy to. I damn near expected Brecken to throw a beer bottle at me and start beating my mom. Psst. You guys want to hear a story? So I was minding my own business on a local roof. I had just beaten a poor innocent zombie to death and I accidentally hit a nearby propane tank. That thing was gonna blow, so I freaking booked it to the corner of the roof. I was sure I was dead, but luckily, I didn't even flinch. Before I could even celebrate, I heard little pitter-patter footsteps around me. Imagine my surprise when one of Santa's little helpers attempted to climb his way towards me. KILL IT! KILL IT! You know, I really didn't want to go on the naughty list and get coal for Christmas, so I let him go free. I thought I was clear of the little midgets, but to my surprise, I was ambushed. Aw, look at you guys in your cute little outfits. What? You're only three feet tall. Little gingerbread men chasing me. Simply adorable. I really, really didn't want to hurt them, but they gave me no choice. I mean, look at this shit. Fuck that. Now, did I want to beat the shit out of Santa's little elves? Absolutely not. But my hands were tied and I just couldn't stop. What has this place done to me? I used to be a hardworking member of society. I had dreams, but now? Now I'm just an elf killer. Before I could even pray for my sins, the boys in the flying machines dropped some drops for the good people of Haran. So I made my way to the nearest drop and instantly knew what I was looking at. These were the Fortnite gamer hacks everyone has been looking for this whole time. This is the reason I was sent here. I mean, sure, they thought I was here to retrieve the hacks, but my main mission, of course, was to find Kareem. If I had told the GRE about what I had found, I would immediately be picked up and taken away from Haran. But I couldn't leave. Not yet. So I picked up all of the gamer hacks, threw them in the nearest fire, and told the GRE that the case I found was a dud. Oh Jesus! God must have realized the horrible sin I had just committed because he sent terrifying demons after me. You know, after that traumatic experience, I decided that being a fish would be a better life choice for me. The ocean was nice and calm and hey, I didn't have to beat little elves to death down here, so win-win. 
oxygen was the only flaw with my plan, so I decided it was actually better for me not to live in the ocean. So smart. You! I swore to you that one day I'd beat the shit out of you with a pipe, and I intend to keep that promise. I asked Rice to give me his information on the Fortnite gamer hacks when Tahir said this. Talk to Karim. He's one of ours. <gasps> Did you just say Kareem? I busted through the nearest door, ran down the hall, and there he was, as handsome as I had remembered him. But he didn't recognize me, and he had a big gash on his head. Who had hurt this pure and innocent soul? Jesus Christ, man. Well, either way, I knew Kareem was safe and sound, and I knew where to find him, so when the time came for the GRE to pick me up, I'd just kidnap Kareem like I did the first time, and jog his memory about who I was later. So I went back to killing zombies, gaining all them juicy skill points, and overall, just having a great time. And then I met Jeremy! I thought I had lost him in the endless forests of New Austin, but no! Here he was, safe and sound. And he was frigging destroying these zombies! You better believe I was cheering him on. But then? He got outnumbered, and there was nothing I could do but watch. In the end, all I could do was leave him. Then I met my first toad. I beat the shit out of him pretty easily, and my first tower was activated. Kareem told me to hold onto the zipline, but ziplines are for pussies. Besides, why would I grab onto the zipline when there's a perfectly good trash bin right there? So I freaking yeeted myself from the top of the tower, just missed the trash bin, and... survived? I was so very, very confused and unsatisfied. I had at least expected my leg bones to shatter upon impact, but there I was, standing up strong and healthy as ever. I did a little research after this and found out that because I had played during the Christmas event, Dying Light was given certain features that it didn't normally have like the little elves from before. And Crane was given super thighs which basically means I took no fall damage. Now normally, I deactivate this in the menu because I don't like using cheats or mods or anything for my challenges, but the elves were too freaking adorable man, I couldn't turn off the Christmas event. Look at them! In their little uniforms. How wholesome. And anyway, the only benefit I got from the event was not taking fall damage, which literally never helped me at all during the challenge. Right after this, I came to my first human enemies. Now, they might have been minding their own business, fixing their car in peace, but I just couldn't help starting the fight. You're probably thinking, Hey Dante, that's racism. You seem to be bullying the black guy a lot more than the white guy. And that's where you'd be wrong, friend, because I assure you, I eventually killed both of these men brutally. But let me tell you, they were tough, man. I... I wasn't sure I was gonna make it. It was a two-on-one situation, and I came so close to falling on my knees and begging them for forgiveness. But then my side homie Hamilio came in as backup and totally destroyed the guy. He got sent into another goddamn dimension. What are you doing in my swamp? <laughs> Julio surprised everyone with his merry-go-round pound, and I proceeded to beat the helpless man to death with my pipe. The other guy realized we weren't a force to tussle with, so we booked it in the opposite direction. Smart man, I'd say. But he forgot I had them Nikes on. Please, I don't want to die. Usually, my Nike strat is a defensive item, something I use to run away from enemies. But today, they were used offensively to hunt a man down. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you're looking for a ransom, I can tell you I'm not balling at the moment. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills that exclusively include me bashing your head in with a pipe. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Yo, homie, I think you got the wrong number. I'm just sitting here at my computer eating a carrot. What's up? You need me to find your daughter? So I can do that. One time in elementary school, we had this, the sick scavenger hunt and... So yeah, I chased him down relentlessly, caught him getting eaten by zombies, and saved his pathetic life by repeatedly smashing him in the spine with my rusty pipe until the zombie let him go. Then I unfairly killed him while the zombies distracted him. And it was my personal favorite time of the day. Go around the peaceful settlements and demand protection money. And if they don't budge, break their kneecaps with a pipe. Ah yes, my Italian ancestors would be proud. How about I break both your legs and drag you through the streets back to Rice's place, huh? Oh, and you know I could do it too. Have you seen my full inventory of pipes? Jafar finally paid up, but you know, I felt bad for threatening to break his brittle old legs. I mean, Jafar was depressed. Just look at him. Listen, buddy, would you like one of my famous Dante Ravioli shoulder rubs? I'm in position, just let me know when. No, man, I told you I'm not gay. I took out my anger on the nearest little person, climbed the tallest building in view, and just thought about things. Was this journey possible? Would I really be able to find the Fortnite gamer hacks for the GRE? After all, they were Kareem's and my only way out of here. 
Would I be able to kill Rice's arena demolisher with only pipes? Would Tahir be able to fall victim to my pipe frenzy? And will Toby Maguire make an appearance in the next video? Find out in part two, my children, because yes, this challenge required two parts. There's too many funny moments I didn't want to cut out. Subscribe to me if you want to see part two and click that bell or else you pretty well aren't subscribed to me. Just make sure you click that bell. I make new gaming challenges every week and it's always a great time here on the Ravioli channel. Thanks for watching. Check out the many other gaming challenge videos on my channel and I'll see you thick boys in my next video.